Ladies and gentlemen, people are waking up. 1980, which of course should have been changed a long time ago. So they bring them in. You wonder where the money coming from? They taking it. The COVID fund that was here, yep. that money. Yep. You talking about the, all the yeah, all the pro housing programs? So when people pay rent, all the rental programs, that money, all the programs that we have in the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. they are bankrupting us. They are taking from all of these programs that we have, mm -hmm. and they are taking the money and they are funding the migrants. Yeah. Our taxpayers, we've already paid thirty two million dollars out of our taxes to house and take care of the migrants. Yeah. Thus far. Now, we already know the only ones who qualify to become citizens in asylum here from the starts of the, they were here after August, they don't even qualify. Period. But here we're going to be taking care of them for five to seven years while there's paperwork floating on people's desk. And why? Send them home. Send them back. But Venezuela already said, oh, we're not taking them back. So now. Who did you vote for? First of all, wait, I have no problem with saying that okay. I did vote for Biden because uh, I was okay. not voting. Okay. I did. Okay, but let's... here is it. Here it is. Wait, wait, That was a question. Okay. Have you answered it, right? Okay. <laughs> the this this uh, migrant influx that we're dealing with right mm -hmm. now. This is your fault. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, well, let me say, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, it is, first of all, let me say. And the follow-up question should be, who are you voting for now in 2024? Because in 2016, if you don't vote for Hillary, you ain't a woman. In 2020, if you didn't vote for Biden, you ain't black. So in 2024, if you don't vote for Trump, you ain't smart. Because in the end, she is right. Money is being diverted, taxpayers' money, to help the migrants. Uh, let me just say I am incredibly proud of what this city has done and what our city employees have done over the last year. Uh, we know we have folks today that are uh, in encampments who are migrants. We're paying careful attention to that. I also think it's important to note that over the last year, we have now welcomed more than 40,000 newcomers to this city. And if we're talking about 50 or 60 of them that are unhoused today, that means 99.9% .9 of the folks who have shown up to this city and sandals and a t-shirt with no services and no support and no infrastructure, we have successfully integrated into the fabric of this country. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how we can make it work. That's how we've made it work, despite the absence of federal support. What is true now is we're entering into a different stage, which is without any federal support, without any work authorization, without changes to policy, we are gonna have to make changes uh, to what we can do in terms of our city budget, and what we can do in terms of our support for newcomers that have arrived in the city. And I would consider that an American betrayal of the highest order. But the thing that I don't tell you, they're compromising safety. Safety of the migrants. Americans want to brace for second wave of Venezuelan gangster coming over the border as country's prison as at least 100 inmates are released. These are killers. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they know what they're doing. Since June, you decide to turn our park into a shelter. Our community is running lawless with legal, illegal Venezuelans taking over our streets. We feel like prisoners in our own homes. As a taxpayer, we can't even enjoy our own park anymore. Unlike the illegals, as a legal immigrant myself, I know what I had to do to enter your country. I was required to do a background check, vaccinations, pay an expensive fee, bring a work letter, letter from you my previous job, shall I go on? You want to look good by helping them, yet we taxpayers are left behind. We are now being put in harm's way because of the crimes they commit in our neighborhood. Your no consequence policy tells them it's okay to commit these damn crimes. Democrat now, policies. what about the citizens and the legal immigrants who came before them? We're still waiting years for our own families to enter this country legally. Yes. It is frustrating to see our voice censored and feeling hopeless. Ladies and gentlemen, some migrants want to escape specific people. They move to a better country because the kids have a better option. And guess what? The violent crime they escape, you bring them as their neighbor. The U.S. Border Patrol said it detained 38 suspected Tren de Aragua members between October of 2022 and October of 2023. Some right here in the El Paso border, according to a report by CNN. 
I also spoke to former Texas Border Patrol agent Amon Blair, who says the Tren de Aragua uses extortion to fund their organization, going to local migrant-owned businesses and extorting money from them. He was very concerned with how little is known about this criminal organization in the United States. Which means the woman earlier in the video is right, which means also the legal migrants that have an opinion are right. So the less you can do is do your job and bring us our safety back. We're starting to notice a new trend. Recently, they have been busting groups that are stealing large quantities of merchandise, and they say the suspects are in the country illegally. Very simple, ladies and gentlemen. You allow the black people to do specific things? Well, it's going to happen for everybody that wants an opportunity now. Just like you have the opportunity to leave a comment, a like, and maybe I'll see you in the next video. Peace.